So when His Majesty is speaking about um, spirituality in that particular speech, some may want to doubt it, you know, like whether it's really His Majesty's words because there may be some similarity with other ancient teachers or other so-called gurus or um, spiritually inclined to the good men, you know, or people. So um, that particular speech, why this uh, particular CD, Dr., what's his name, uh, Bill uh, Deagle, somebody had put me on to that, had mentioned his work, and I think at that time I was suffering um, what you call uh, um, kind of like jet lag from some of the other you know, a couple of years ago during during um, the Bush reign and after 9-11. It's almost like jet lag. You're suffering jet lag from all of the other so-called teachers or, you know, lecturers out there. Some of them were just kind of repeating kind of the same thing, kind of like the 9-11 truth kind of thing and all that is kind of like the same. After, initially, when it first came out, there were certain ones who really brought something new to the table concerning the whole 9-11 thing. But then there were others who were, I would call them at best, kind of regurgitators. They were kind of regurgitating. And then it almost became, you click on every video, almost like with the 2012 thing, where a lot of people are saying the same thing, you know, concerning the Mayan, the Mayan calendar, so forth and so on. And then we really get to find out that <clears throat> even the particular date of December 21st, 2012, is subject to some big question marks. Like when we put out a video talking about some of the signs of uh, 2012 seems to have happened two years, two years earlier, or we're getting the signs before 2012. And some have speculated that part of that is because um, the so-called uh, disilluminati or the, the spiritually evil beings. Really, they're unilluminated, but it's like Luciferian. Lucifer means light bearer, and but Lucifer is a Greek term, is a, is a Latin terminology. Lucifer is a Latin terminology that finds its way in the Hebrew part of the Bible. And then when you really get to the Halal HaShahar, which is the Hebrew part, you really begin to understand that this Lucifer idea is the idea that the Satanists or the Satanawi, the Satana, which they prefer. And then the Satana means the opposition. Basically, it means the opposition to what? The opposition to the good, the opposition to the true God, to the true source, to the true life, to the true creator. And then we have to go in different levels of, um, as it says, Christ, each one in their own order. And Christ is like that first is the first fruit. So why this particular lecture is a good lecture, the lecture with uh, Dr. Uh, Deal, Dr. Bill Deal, and certain lectures like the one that we had mentioned with uh, A.A. A. Uh, Rashid, and sometimes we also speak about um, Bobby Hemet lectures and Phil Valentine's lectures, and um, there's some others out there who are speaking grounding truths, especially for this time that we're moving in. They can see the truth or the truer picture, the truer elements from a lot of the deception, a lot of the regurgitation of deception that's going on where everybody's looking at 2012, 2012, 2012. But really, it began in 2010. Well, when we say began, um, when it says this is the beginning, when, when it says in the scripture, this is the beginning, of, of of troubles. When you shall see these things, it shall be the beginning of it. That's what we mean in the sense about the real 2012 really was 2010. So we're already witnessing this the, these effects, but what is this particular period of time inaugurating? First of all, the calendar. If you look at the ancient Mayans, as another lecturer said, I think in the Elenin that we viewed recently, again, the part one of the Elenin spoke about the Mayans had the so-called zero date and them having the zero date that means after three 
to one, they would have a, a, a zero date. But in the West, it basically goes down to, to like, say, 1 um, B.C., then they go to 1 A.D. So, therefore, there's these errors in the mathematical calculation that if you take that into consideration, it wouldn't be 2012. It would actually be 2011. Now, we're not going to do like some of the other lecturers have done, which even with the great scientific knowledge, all try to qualify it within a, a particular, a specific time based on a mathematical calculation while not recognizing that there is divine intelligence that still rules over, and we're speaking about what mortals will call God or the true God, the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach our black Lord and Savior, because the, the racial element is important. This does not excuse all black folks by no means, no means necessary. In fact, it's really worse for most black folks because of that truth of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, because he's not a, a respect of persons, even if they are racially similar, but if they are spiritually dissimilar, then ones really have a have a, 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 a problem if they're not inclined to repentance. They have a problem. So um, the spirituality speech of His Majesty, Dr. Deal, um, Bill Deagle, his, um, his lecture here that we was reasoning on, plus looking at one of the old uh, um, uh, Dr. York, um, Dr. York videos as well, kind of brought it, you know, brought this idea once again um, front and center in the mind's eye. Now, we were looking for His Majesty's, uh, um, where, where he spoke on uh, spirituality. I mean, that speech of His Majesty, where he spoke on spirituality, spirituality speech where he speaks on religions and how, you know, the difference between spirituality and religion is a is a key is a key uh theme or matter that we would like to just remind our viewers and listeners about whereas Matthew speaks on spirituality. Just okay. Now there are different levels of, of knowledge. His Majesty being the 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 chairman of Ethiopia, the Imperial Ethiopia's um, Ministry of Education and Fine Arts. Let's understand that education and art do go hand in hand, unlike in the West where they have divided education from fine arts. When we speak about artifacts, we're really speaking about art and facts, that within the artistic representation of things is much facts that... This has been lost on the Western world, what we call white supremacy of the Gentile world order. And many of the lecturers and teachers and scholars out there who have a lot to share often um, avoid white supremacy. Perhaps they think they'll be making it a racial issue, but in order to put this prophetic time in its proper context, we have to recognize the relationship with white supremacy and these fallen angels or these beings, interdimensional beings as well. But as we're moving into this 2012 um, time period or dispensation, um, what you see in front of you is the, is the halal menorah. Let us bring this in a little bit closer, the halal menorah. And the halal menorah or the Hanukkah, what's known as the Hanukkah um, menorah. The menorah is the, is the candle, or rather the lampstand. More correctly, it's the lampstand. It's often called the candle stick or the candle holder. But let's remember that in ancient time, they did not use wax candles primarily. It was oil lamps. So the menorah is actually the oil Lamp, and there's an important um, mishle or masale or parable in that, a parabolic wisdom 
or verbal, or I can say hieroglyph. Well, this is where symbolically in symbols, much is embedded, just like in art, much is embedded within certain symbols when they are rightly or properly interpreted. So this is the Halal Psalms a prophetic timeline for what often has been called the Great Tribulation period. And many say, well, what are we to do? Well, where are we to go? And this is what we've been speaking in some of the recent videos and posts about really um, spiritually grounding and centering oneself in truth and, and working on as they say, their salvation, as it says, to work out your salvation and, and to recognize what is man and what is this reflection of God in man, the image that we were created in spiritually, psychologically, and physically in that particular order. And to redeem the time, to use and utilize the time that we have to really center and to ground ourselves so that no matter what happens, in the outer world, whether outside this world, happening in the heavens, or whether outside one's own being, that they will be spiritually grounded, as it were, in the words, spiritually centered within, within the spirit, within the truth, within the, the real life, that they'll be able to perceive that, that particular reality for themselves, because those who have come to that um, consciousness or awareness recognize how important it is. And this is why many um, in different religious and spiritual disciplines, they teach the pray, prayer or, or, or chanting or meditation. And meditation, as another um, teacher um, said it and reminded even I of this, that meditation means to mutter in a sense. Meditation is a sound. Meditation is a sound. It's like when it says sound doctrine. Meditation is a, is, is a sound. And it's a harmonic. Um, prayer is not just throwing words outside one, like sending words outside. Like we say when people talk about sending love. Um, it's better to be love and to have that love that one be radiate and like attract like according to the magnetics, the magnetics, if one's able to receive, like what uh, Yeshua Christos, the Moshiach, said that when we go into one's home or a house and, and we seek to find a son of peace, and if the house, if, if those inhabitants receive our peace, then our peace dwell. But if then there be not those who receive our peace, if they do not honor us, then we, we take that with us. It's, it's very important, like when Christ says to the, the beloved disciple in, in John's epistle concerning, um, be careful who you bid God speed. Be careful who you bid peace to. In other words, who you so-called send peace in that sense, you know, to. Because you begin to entangle yourself in certain psychical matters. And this is what causes a lot of double-mindedness. And this is not a time for double-mindedness, but for single-mindedness, as Christ said, let your eye be single. So as we're moving into this particular, as we're already in this particular time, what you see before you is a nine-branch Hanukkah or Hanukkah uh, menorah or lampstand, falsely called candlestick. And as you look over here, we'll begin r roughly over here. This is Psalm 110, 2010 A.D. Now, a Messianic Jewish uh, sister put this together. Um, I forget her name right now, but we're utilizing this just to give certain um, reference and credit where credit is due. Then this is Psalm, um, the second candlestick. The first candlestick is 2010. Now, what's interesting in 2010, there were many prophetic signs which they told us was supposed to happen here. But, but many of them happened here. Even this year, there are signs where, according to some so-called New World Order pseudo-Illuminati um, 
the, the, the Satanist agenda try to deceive. You have to remember Diablos, devil, diabolic means to split, to de divide, to lie against. The, the Satans are opposed. They oppose this ascension. Now, it's not a physical ascension initially. It's a spiritual, it's a consciousness, it's a psychological ascension. It's, a, it's an awareness that creates the so-called experience or feeling of less density. You know, it's like something like a weight comes off of your shoulder. But psychologically, when weights are lifted, it's like those who have come to, to Christ in spirit and in truth and who have been born again, they also feel this, this weight, this less density in their spirit, in their soul, psychological nature, in their, in their physical body. So now this is 20, 2010 A.D., Psalm 110 to Psalm 118. Now this is often called, some of these psalms here are, are known as um, the, Halal, the Halal Psalms. Prophetic timeline for the Great Tribulation. Now, here, if you look down here, it says 2011 A.D. is possible first year of the Great Tribulation. If you really look at years and times and events and deeds and changes and, and, and strange things, you would say that this year, based on all the years that we're able to remember and recall, because some things have been suppressed, and we'll touch on how some of those things are suppressed or really memories blocked so that you, 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 you know it, but you cannot recall it. It's like things that we know, and then something stimulates us to remember it. So this is 2011 A.D., Psalm 111. Now, we, we don't have time in this particular lecture to get into some of these psalms, but y'all willing, hopefully we will. But if anything, you take this down, and please, you get into these psalms yourselves. Psalms 110 lining up with 2010, 111, with 2011, straight through to 2018. Now, we say, actually, it's not so much 2012, though this opens a particular doorway. There are certain alignments that do happen here. But what they try to do is take all these signs that the ancients spoke about and condense them to this one year and this one day. What we're saying is that it's a period. It's a period of seven Years, seven years rounded off on the eighth, just like the Hebrew holy days and the feast of the Moedim of Yahweh Elohim. There are seven, which occurs in three, at three times, three times in the year, all the males of the Beta Israel. But these three times contain seven, and then the fulfillment is the eighth or the Shemeni Atzeret or the Sementenya Ken. So that eighth. Yes, like when we look at the Ethiopian calendar and the difference between the Ethiopian or the ancient calendar, the Enochian, actually is connected and based on the Enochian calendar, the Ethiopian calendar is, they say, seven years behind. Actually, the Western calendar has rushed seven years ahead so that the Satana will have a six-year advantage so when they speak about certain things, they're speaking about it out of its proper sequence and time. They know this, but everyone else is, is, is behind. This is why they, 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 they put the calendar the way it is. So when we say in the West is 2012, if we look at it from the Ethiopian calendar, it's roughly about, what, 20, 2007? 2007, roughly about 2007. Now, 2007 is interesting because back in 2007 was actually the Ethiopian New Year, was actually the new millennium, what some call the 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 Sementenya Shi, or, or the 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 eight thousandth year, the eighth so-called millennium. You know, when we look at ancient Ethiopian um, calculation of time, or 7,500. Now you have to recall the ancient prophecy from, from Adam where Hewan was that the Moshiach will come in, what, 5,500 years or 5,500 years. And then we knew that there will be 
so-called 2,000 years until what some call the return, or more correctly, Christ in his kingly character fulfilled in the person of our Lord and Savior revealed in the person of Ketamawi Haile Selassie, the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, the king of kings of Ethiopia, the elect of God. Now that's one of the significant manifestations of the millennium or the 20th century that has also been suppressed concerning the king of kings on a variety of levels. First of all, spiritually. Second of all, psychologically. And then third of all, physically or what people will call racially because he's a black man. But the significance that he's black is not the first reason or the initial reason why the Satanat have suppressed the knowledge of Kedamawi Haile Selassie, of Abba Kedus. The first reason is the spiritual reason. The second reason is the psychological reason. The third reason is the racial reason. But because they flipped it, mind and body, you understand, or body and soul, they put the body first. You know? Anyway, let's go forward with this right here just to go through this candlestick right here. Because now what's significant is coming up on November 22nd, when we get to November 22nd, that would be the second or third day of um, Hanukkah this year, according to this year's Hanukkah. Now, Hanukkah, Hanukkah is called the Festival of Lights, but it, it links with the um, ancient Hebraic celebration or dedication of the holy place, the Mekdes, the temple. That's what Hanukkah is all about. Hanukkah, they call it in the temple times, it was the dedication of the temple. But prior to that, it was the consecration of the holy place. But now the Jews call it the festival of lights. But now something very interesting will happen in a couple of days or is, is expected a certain alignment. Now, if you look at this right here, this is... Um, a projection of what this alignment will actually be right here. This alignment with the uh, galactic equator with the sun. Let's move it out a little bit so you can see, see this right here. The celestial equator. You understand? This is the Milky Way, the galactic equator, and all this is aligning on... Uh, on um, November 22nd, on November 22nd, there's another page that we saw on the internet. I think we present a little bit of it in another video, actually, but this is one of the graphics from that particular page. Now, in order to bring this a little bit together, you would need to understand um, the Hebraic uh, calculation of time, and we're saying the Hebraic um, not to say the Jewish. See, the Jewish is based on the Hebraic, but it's spun due to Zionism. So what we have to do is we have to retrograde it based on the Ethiopic or the Enochian or the solar aspect of the Ethiopic. When we say we are Ethiopic Hebrews, so we are qualifying the true Hebraicness because the Hebrew is all a part of that crossover. Hebrew means the crossover. And the crosser over is the one who can cross from low degrees to high degrees or go from mortality to immortality. So when we speak about the ascension, it's those who are Hebraic or have been anointed. That means receive Yehoshua HaMoshia in spirit and in truth. Spirit is first. One may not be able to accept because of certain um, bias or prejudice the fullness or significance of Christ being black. But that's not the first matter that's significant. So when we judge uh, counterfeit Christianity and white supremacies, Christ as being the antichrist and false, it's not just because their Christ is blonde here, blue eyed. We judge, first of all, spiritually the fruit of it. It's, it's at odds or it's in opposition to the teaching of Moshiach, to the teaching of Jesus Christ, to the, to the word. And that's how we know that it's false. That's what our master told us. Judge, the, judge by its fruit. 
Now, this is what's going to happen. This is a this is a, a graphic, a graphic uh, demonstration of what's going to happen on November 22nd, the second or third day of Hanukkah. There's a particular alignment, and we use this demonstration right here to show how significant and related this is to this particular figure from ancient Egypt. This particular figure right here from ancient Egypt is known as, as Ankh Wahibre. Now, who is Ankh Wahibre? We're going to try to put all of this um, together in this one, this particular, some, some elements we are kind of meditating, um, keeping the sound, reminding ourselves about what we are seeking to communicate here so that this will be at least a foundation to build on for those who are able to receive it. What you're seeing is Wahibere. Now, who is Wahibere? Now, when we refer to the book Egyptian Yoga that we talked about in a previous video, um, we saw this particular art, in fact, and we was looking into uh, the Georgis. You've probably seen some of the recent videos on George, on Georgis, because they say it's Ophiuchus. But then when we look at the stars, and since the basic uh, imagery, the outline even to the zodiac that we have in the, in the Western, based on the Greeks, is somewhat different than the ancient Egyptian and also somewhat different than the Chinese and other cultures because when they look at the stars and the position of the stars, many have figured the stars, a particular constellation, for example, Scorpio. If you look at Scorpio... Scorpio is a scorpion in the Western, but in other forms of it, it's the, it's, 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 the, it's the eagle. So what we're trying to say is that when you look at the position of the stars, there is a representation which is given, which is based on certain cultural motifs of the particular, of the particular people. So different cultures um, um, interpret it the stars, the position and the pattern of the stars, somewhat differently. So, so when we look at Ophiuchus, people say, well, this is a serpent bearer, and they show some of the Eurocentric, I think we have some of the other images in this presentation right here, where they show some of the, some of the images, for example. Let's see if we can put this on the side and bring this up again. Um, this is an interesting book as well. Um, so we have uh, ancient, for example, ancient Egyptian George, right? Or, or Heru, who is actually Seth. You understand? Who's actually Seth right here. And you can see the dragon. And this is an Ethiopian churchical image of George and the dragon here. So... This is many thousands of years ago. And if you look at this image, what's interesting about this image right here, you can see this is a wing, just like this is a wing right here. And this is a wing here. This is a wing. So although some of the images of George might, based on the artist, if the artist is initiated, understands what they are drawing, and that they copy other art which, which the artist understood what they were drawing, it may be more correct according to the explication of certain of the mystery, the mystery of the matter, while others may have just drawn it, you know, like in a modern, in a modern uh, form, you know, like somebody draws somebody on a horse based on their imagination. While the ancients were showing the position of certain stars, as you can see even the body pose right here. Now, as you can see, this is confrontation. This is Bob Marley's confrontation album. We're going to touch on that in the Georgis because if you look, the the um, the the rider is positioned in the opposite direction. The rider is actually positioned in the opposite direction, as we can see right over here, because it all depends on if you're looking at the cosmos from which direction you are. 
but some say that actually this is when that sun is centered in the dark rift right here. And this is, how can you say, when the polar shift, this is at the midpoint of, this can be seen as the midpoint of the polar shift. So although it is positioned differently in the cosmos presently in its, in its so-called mundane or regular movement, we're about to go through a time when the heavens, as it says, when the stars will fall from heaven. That means positions will radically shift. So when people look for certain stars, like, for example, look at this Ophiuchus here. If you look at this Ophiuchus here, Ophiuchus is facing this way. If you look in some of the other representation, Ophiuchus is facing this way, just like some of the pictures of, of Georgis or George, He's facing the opposite way. Here, he's facing this way. But if we now take into consideration the dark rift and the alignment and the gravity of the situation that happens then, we can understand that there might be and most likely would be a reshifting, a reshifting of position of stars due to the, due to the magnetics and due to the pull. Now, I don't think we can find this image right here right now um what we'll do is we'll try to go into that that aspect of the teaching a little bit more our main point right here is about the events that are to occur as they connect with our hebraic um with our hebraic calendar coming up on november 22nd and it is said that the stars will be lined up in a way like this. This is uh, the central sun. This is the galactic equator. You can see the celestial equator, the precession, the movement. And it's interesting that here, this is ancient Egypt. Ancient Egypt, this is from the Egyptian book of the coming forth by day, or the Perth M. Haru. And this is the episode that is known as the slaughter. This is an episode known as the slaughter, and we notice that the position of this galactic equator, which is the Zang, this is the Zang, or the, the how we say, the staff, the, the staff, uh, the Zang, in the head of Apophis, and Apophis is not a flying serpent, not a higher wisdom, but a lower or mundane or earthbound wisdom. This is Apophis right here, the earthbound wisdom that is being slain, like Georgis slays the dragon within the imagery and within the art, as George slays the dragon. Even here, we have ancient Egypt over here, and we have... Um, Ethiopia, modern, more modern Ethiopian representation of the same, of the same mythic, but also now we get to learn this is actually a heavenly scene. This is actually a heavenly scene that has been pictured within this Christian art. You see the position of the Zang? The Zang, now this is different right here. And like we said, we're going to explain this shift right here where the sun is not on the head. You see the sun right here is behind the head. But here, the sun is in the center of the action. The sun is in the center of the action. Could the dark rift actually become a sun? Or can it be a, a total galactic shift until these particular stars would be positioned in this particular, causing the alignment like this? Could this symbolize the alignment right here? And could this right here be more the so-called usual movement right here? But notice the zang. Notice this line right here. This line right here. So we have we have the actual heavens. This is the heavens right here. We have ancient Egypt, right? We have ancient Egypt, Ankh Wahibure, and here we have Kedus Georgis. Kedus Georgis right here. Now, according to Egyptian Yoga, the Philosophy of Enlightenment by Muata Ashby and edited by Karen Clark, Ashby on page 65, it says, from the Egyptian book 
of the coming forth by day, falsely called, as most might be more familiar with the false name, the false, the, the pseudonymous um, name, uh, the Book of the Dead, the Egyptian Book of the Dead. And you know why the Europeans called the Book of the Dead? Because they were grave robbing. So that's why it was called the Book of the Dead. But its actual title, Pert M. Kharu, means the coming forth by day. This episode is known as the slaughter. Now the soul of Ankh Wahibure, this figure represents the soul of Ankh Wahibure. He does battle with Apophis who is sitting atop the vertebra, which is the back or the jed. He's sitting on the back of the jed pillar of Osar or Osiris. And this is very symbolic. This is the Leviathan. This could be the world system rate today that we live in with the corporate and the other um, Leviathan. And also Leviathan is this time, as we talked about the illusion and deception of time which connects with the world system, this artificial time, that they don't understand this heavenly time and therefore the heavenly signs. See, the heavenly signs have been manifesting to show us what time we're in. But most people don't see these heavenly signs, don't pay attention to these heavenly signs. And then they delude ones with the, the, their false sorcerer form of horoscope, with the false horoscope where they just give you a false, mundane misinterpretation, a very limited interpretation. Your sign is this, and this is going to happen, so on and so on. But not in the greater cosmic sense, as Genesis, I think, 1 and 14 points out, that the sun, the moon, and the stars are for signs and seasons and days and years, not that watch uh, on, on your wrist. And I and I, sister, and, and I, sister wife, made a very important um um, observation concerning the watch, how the watch is placed right where our pulse is, how the watch that's on the wrist is placed right where our pulse is. And then, you know, a lot of the watches have certain batteries and there's a tick, tick, and, and, and the connection now between these things and our bodies, you understand, is, is being more known. That knowledge was not known to the most Europeans at that time, but some who had studied some of the more so-called cultic or, or suppressed and hidden knowledge understood the connection between the two. That's why you find some of the hoptom or the higher so-called Europeans wouldn't wear the watch on their wrist. They would wear it like a pocket watch or a side watch. So that's another way of entraining the heart, just like a musical beat will keep you in tune. You know, if you listen to pleasant music, it will calm you down, calm your breathing. If you listen to loud, noisy music, it will hype you up, so forth and so on. The same thing happens with the watch. And there's much more to that, but I wanted to make that observation because it's, it's a continuation of the revelation that's being revealed through the Holy Spirit to all of us concerning this reality. Remember, revelation, basically, apocalypse means unveiling. When they talk about Christ's return, it's really the revelation, the revealing, the unveiling. He says, I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. So it's not so much about the return of Christ, because he said he's already here. He's with us. So it's a lost in translation. People are lost in the trans and the mistranslation. If you get beyond the mistranslation, you get to the word, he basically says the revealing, when he will reveal himself when he would, in a sense, unveil himself or when he will reveal that he, is, that he is here and he has been here. But this episode that we're seeing right here, let's get back to this episode, is, is Ankhwahibbure doing battle with Apophis, who is sitting atop the vertebra or the back, the jed pillar of Osiris implying that Apophis seeks control of the spiritual energy present in the spiritual subtle channels of the back. Now, see, this is a very important observation that Muata Ashby and his Egyptian yoga makes concerning this particular image or glyph or symbolic representation right here of Ankh Wahibure doing battle with Apophis who is sitting 
on top of the jed or the spinal column because that means that the apophis is seeking to control the spiritual energy just like the so-called um, satanist of this present time and Leviathan of this present time is seeking to control the spiritual energy present in the spiritual subtle channels of the back. Why do you think that there's a big war against so-called marijuana? Think about it. If all that has been learned about marijuana and all the benefits of marijuana as compared to, to rum and alcohol and wine and all these other kind of opiates so forth and so on. It's because it's a psychic suppression, seeking to keep down the, because not only does the marijuana has a lot of holistic benefits, and medical benefits, but it also has the great potential to awaken, awaken people. When they become awake, they begin to recognize this reality at work. And therefore, the apophis is seen then then the apophis could be seen. It's like this movie we saw about this guy. I, had, I forgot the name of the movie, but he made this machine. And when he, and it was opening dimensions and the pineal gland, the pineal gland, pineal. Remember, this is where also uh, Yaakov, Jacob, this is this week's sabbatical portion, Vi, um, um, uh, Vayishlach, this week's uh, sabbatical portion where Jacob wrestles with this man. At, at Peniel or Panuel, Peniel, which means face of El, the face of God. And what is, what is the ancient Mitmanon's main intention? To see the face of God, to see God's face, face to face. So the apophis is seeking control or domination of the spiritual and the psychical energy that is present in the spiritual subtle channels of the back. This is why they keep people on the lower chakras through um, things like uh, lower vibrational, lower vibra violence and sex, and they keep people in the red zone, in other words. They want to keep people, really, they want to push people down below the red zone into the black, because black is below that. We're now we're speaking of light energies, understand the difference. We're speaking of light and to keep them in the black zone or the red zone, the lower levels of the red zone. They don't want that energy to rise to the orange, to the ultraviolet, or, 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 to, or to the infrared, the, the orange. And these are all particular scientific rays. And in the spectral, the spectral breaks down these seven, these seven rays, these seven rays, and they, and they are tonal harmonics as well. So they seek to keep people down with like the the the, the subliminal suggestions and, and and the media and and even the news, the negative, the fear, the confusion, the chaos to keep their this is this is this is the process seeking to control that spiritual energy. Keep it below the heart level definitely. You know, some have reached the yellow, which is the third stage. But to get to the green level, and remember, Georgis is known as the green one, to get to that heart level, that righteousness of ma'at is, 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 not, is not what the, the, the devil, Satan, or the Satanat, or these evil, pernicious beings desire. So Apophis is that symbol that we have in the Bible of the snake that is crawling on its belly. There you go right there. That's the symbol right there, the snake that goeth on its belly, much like even the dragon here, the zendo right here, that goeth on its belly or stays in the mundane. It's earthbound. It's earthbound. The initiate now, the Adis Met or the disciple, the Dek Amesmur, does battle by invoking or speaking the fire of wisdom by invoking, you know what I'm saying, by speaking the word. This is how we come to discipline of the mind. Not Discipline of mind is speaking the words of truth, the, the, the fire of wisdom, the holy words of the scripture properly understood. 
and therefore asserts the absolute reality, the absolute, the abs soul, the absolute reality he has discovered in himself, in him or herself, in the Moshiach. This is what Georgis is also symbolic of as a Christian martyr when we understand his story properly in truth. And according to this, it says, quote, I am a ray. I am the Rai, I am the vision, continually praise. I am he in whom is the sacred eye. Remember what Christ said? To make your eye what? To make your eye single. Then your whole body, your whole body, your whole hypostasis is full of light and cannot be harmed by any of these physical things, any of these things to come. The back is where unbounded spiritual energy, known in ancient Egypt as the Bhutto Uraeus, resides. The initiate, the Adismet, the newcomer, the Dekamesmor, the disciple, is admonished, admonished to develop the fire of the back, to develop the fire of the back. In other words, like they said, have a backbone in truth. Not a wishbone, you know, a backbone for truth, but to develop that fire. Now, there's much even in that um, verbal hieroglyphic, to develop the fire of the back. We understand the kundalini or what's known as the seven seals in man and the, and the, and the, and the so-called chakras, but these are consciousness levels. But fire is a key word from the Ethiopic. The isat is divine intelligence. The Isat is divine intelligence. So the fire of the back. What did Yahweh say to, to Moshe? You cannot see what? My face and live. You cannot see my face and live. No one can see my face and live. But when I pass by, I will show you my what? My backward parts. My backward parts. In other words, where one must begin with that fire with that fire in the back, that fire in the back. Now, let's just return within the time that we have right here because we want this to be uh, some practical, some practical um, things for one to meditate and do, not just, you know, how many, how many mystical things we know there's a lot of ones going on with that, and that's that's nice, but that's not really it's not really serviceable. It's, it doesn't really help one in the present pass through the dark rift to get to the new future and the true future. It's kind of vain glory. Like I said, knowledge uh, puffs up, but in love, we want to share what it is that we can do to ground ourselves and center ourselves and spiritually prepare ourselves, no matter where we are on, on physical earth or in physical earth. Because if one is not spiritually and psychologically grounded, then the body is already lost. The body is already lost. But this is the menorah. This is the menorah. We're coming into the Hanukkah time and see our Hebraic Judaic uh, year, the, the, the breakdown for this particular season, when, when certain alignments, when certain holy days, because we notice that a lot of the signs that have been going on in heaven and earth have also been connected with many of the Hebrew holy days or the Hebrew holidays. It's almost as though the heavens is bearing witness to the true Hebrew or the Hebrew way. And this makes perfect sense because Yeshua HaMoshiach, our black Lord and Savior, said that um, ye worship, most people worship in all religions or whatever that they worship, that which they know not. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. And Yehoshua has revealed himself in the person and through the person of the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, Edomawi Haile Selassie, elect of God, king of kings of Ethiopia. And that's the half of the story that the evildoers and the 
fallen angels and, and interdimensional beings have sought to suppress and even to wipe out of the historical record as best as possible. This is why you don't find them speaking of Hala Selassie or Ethiopia. Even, even, even with their lies and blasphemy, they have to suppress that because they know that it, it will bring the truth. So they try to say ignore that it existed. Mm-hmm. And all you get is foolish or misinformed people that continue to spread the lies against the king of kings that have already been proven to be lies of Satan, Yetaragame Yehun. Now, we are moving now from one, uh, 111 to 112 when we get to 2012, so the 112th Psalm. But now notice we said that when we look at the Ethiopian calendar, seven, seven, seven to eight years behind, we round off actually eight. It's more like seven and change. But if you round it off, as they teach us in mathematics, it'll be eight be eight years. So if we add eight years to 2012, what do we have? We have 2020. Now, if you look into the book of Revelation, it does talk in a term of years, where it says like three years, three and a half years. And we can do some further um, meditation on this nine candle or nine lampstand menorah right here and see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Once you get through the seven is 2018, right, according to this, but then we have 2020, which is true vision. Now, 2017, some say is the possible last year of the Great Tribulation. This is not to say that the Great Tribulation is just going to be between 2011 and 2017, this is one projected possibility that is very grounded, that is very grounded in scriptures, in the Bible, in prophecy, as well as the science of what we know and what we have in heaven and earth to verify our conclusions and to verify these particular conclusions. So the next holy day or holy season that we're coming and most are going to focus on Christmas so-called Christmas, Santa Claus and 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 reindeer and, and a lot of this is just total blasphemy. But what we should focus on is a festival of illumination or light. You understand? And the light actually comes from His Word. And we want to sum up right here with this part of it because this is going to be a brief a brief um, reminder of the Hanukkah, of the Hanukkah and the alignment, the Hanukkah. Um, alignment, solar, 